Checking In with Anthony and Glenn is brought to you by HD Supply. It's Checking In with Anthony and Glenn. Teaching you to be the hotelier that you want to be. It's Checking In with Anthony and Glenn. Anthony. Glenn, I got a question for yes, you. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? You know what? I was doing well, but I've been uh, I've been here at the J- Jacob Javits Center a little too long, so I'm starting to feel a little like it's enough already. Does anybody eat dirty water hot dogs in New York City anymore? I love dirty water hot dogs in New York City because, like, I, I we're in New York. I'm feeling New York. I'm on the West Side. I'm looking through this window, seeing my reflection, seeing the reflection of the West Side. It's absolutely gorgeous with the Jacob Javits Center. And just as soon as I, you said hello, Anthony, I thought about a dirty water hot dog, and I haven't had a dirty water hot dog in probably ten years. And I'm going to have one today. Good. I'm very, I'm very excited that you're going to take this this leap. It must be a big deal for you. Well, it is a good, big deal, especially if I'm going to be on the toilet the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, how are you? You good? Yeah, I'm doing good. You know, once again, we're here at uh, H uh, H. Uh, Hotel experience HX the hotel experience man I'm having trouble getting these things out. But and I'm worried BD about you. Why? But I'm worried about you. Uh, oh, you really? Are? Yeah, because you're a little stressed. Like this, like you've had a very busy couple of weeks, a couple of months. Yeah. And I spoke to you yesterday, and you seemed very stressed. So let's do, work on some exercises. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm ready. I want you to wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. and I want you to have a cup of tea. A cup of tea. And then I want you to go out to your pool deck, yes. and even though it's cold out. Right. I want you to put on some nice warm clothes. I want you to sit there. Mm-hmm. And I want you to say. I'm smart enough. <laughs> I'm pretty enough. And gosh darn it, Anthony likes me. <laughs> I like that. And that's going to reduce your stress level. <laughs> All right. That's beautiful. Every as, day. As a matter of fact, I, happen- I don't want to see my friend stressed. Uh, I happen to be attending um, the Chico's conference in Bermuda last week, and uh, I decided to start doing yoga again. And um, I got some great yoga videos on uh, YouTube, and it was very, very helpful to try to bring back a little more control because my anxiety levels have really been a little bit higher mm-hmm. than I'd prefer. Right. Uh, I... I understand and um i don't know how i manage my stress levels um but i just spend a lot of time um alone like when i'm really busy i'll be busy for 18 hours and and for one day and then one day i'll take a half a day off and i'll just sit there and right. literally veg out and it's just it really helps like i'm alone as i've said many times i just like being by myself and it really chills me out right and i'm an introvert and i'm the type of guy that really needs to uh have some time to refresh myself away from people and you know thank goodness i've had such an incredible travel schedule this year speaking at amazing events all around the country but it's really i really need that time to uh reflect after we do these podcasts i've got one more day in uh, new york city and then i'm gonna have three days at home where everybody's away for the day and i won't have to talk and you to can anyone. go out to the deck yes and do what I told you to do. All right, I'm going to go out and buy myself a new sweatshirt. So there's a gentleman across yes. the table, very good-looking guy with a beard and a really nice sweater. Who the hell is that? Uh, his name is Justin Kellerman, the general manager of the Park South Hotel. And the first question, uh, Justin, how long have you had the beard, or are you just trying to get in on November? Uh, I've had the beard now probably for a couple of years. Um, I, I grew up kind of working in luxury hotels, was never able to have a beard, went on vacation on a extended period in between jobs and started to let it grow out a little bit and uh, my wife liked it and it's uh, it's been here ever since so very interesting i'm going to teach somebody about the hotel industry and about life in general right we are you know if you want to be on our podcast you know if we know you and we think you're interesting you know you can be on our podcast if it's something we're interested in uh but we don't really have to do this podcast and we don't really have to do it for anybody but ourselves right, right. yeah well typically i just like having the opportunity to bask right. in your presence which is so, the whole reason for the show <laughs> i don't blame you <laughs> so i'm sitting here right before we go on um mike and i said who the hell is this guy and he said um oh he's a pr friend and i was like what the hell is a pr friend and he goes well i know him from pr i was like i don't know what you're talking about he goes well i have a pr friend that and this is one of his clients, and he asked if he can be on the show. And I said yes, because he has a hotel in New York, and he's a general manager, and Glenn knows that I love hotels in New York, and I love general managers, so he's on the show. So if you have a PR company and you ask us to be on the show, if you, know, you have a client, if they're interesting and they have a really nice beard and they work uh-huh. in New York, they may be able to be on the show. And, of course, we're referring to public relations, not Puerto Rico. But if you are from Puerto Rico and think you want to be on the show, hey, give us a, give us a shout-out. What the hell out that anyway. about? Wait, wait. Public relations, Puerto Rico. Well, because you keep saying PR. PR. Everyone calls oh, Puerto Rico all right, PR. Thank you. All right, thank you. you're trying to be funny again. Uh, I'm not even bothering anymore with you, Anthony. Don't. You're too tough of an audience Don't. to make laugh. you too bad of a comedian. I know. 
I've been watching a lot of stand-up comedy lately, Justin, and it's just working the reverse. I think I'm becoming less funny over time. But I think that just might be Anthony's, um, you know, uh, being all over me. Now I'm, like, nervous to say anything you around be. you. So can I ask you one question? Uh, you can ask him all the questions. I'm no, just, not uh, all the questions. Just a question. So your general manager at the hotel... What's the name of the hotel and where is it? Because I want to know. What, it probably used to be something else because I don't really know the name of it. Sure. No, actually, it's the Park South Hotel. It's on 28th Street between Park Avenue South and Lexington. Uh, it's been around since 2001. It was family owned and operated for many, many years. And in December of 2017, Two Hotels Hospitality and Joie de Vivre came in. We took over management of the hotel. So I've been there for just about a year now. And you got renovated it? We didn't got renovated. Um, there were some improvements made over the past couple of years before we took over. Uh, okay. And now we're working with the ownership group on a product improvement plan over the course of the next several years. And we're looking forward and excited to see how that goes. Are you allowed to say who the ownership group is? Sure. It's a group out of Rhode Island called Atlantic Stars Hospitality. Okay. And um, what is your first job in the hotel business? My first job in the hotel business, my first job in the hospitality business, I started bussing tables when I was 14 years old. I kind of grew wow. up in, in restaurants. I bussed tables. I waited. I bartended. I managed a restaurant in a summer home from college. Um, and so I grew up in F&B. always thought I was going to be a food and beverage guy. Um, and hotels then, are so much better than food and beverage guys. Right, right. <laughs> well, I came to slowly learn that over time. And so um, my first hotel job, I worked for a resort developer in the Caribbean. I went to University of Delaware. I went to hotel school, hotel management school, University of Delaware. And uh, there's a gentleman that had his U.S. office about 15 minutes away from our campus, and he was developing hotels in Turks and Caicos. And so I worked for him in his reservations office. I was a sales associate. I answered phones and, and took reservations calls, and um, that's how I wow. got my start. That's just another great story about how you come in at the, the bottom rungs, and if you put in the hard work and you have some vision, you could really achieve great stuff. What was your first GM job? My first GM job was the Jade Hotel in Greenwich Village. Sure. Which okay. is now called the Walker Hotel. Did you open that hotel? I was the second GM there. Okay. Yeah. And what was your second GM job? And my second GM, I was a general manager at Nomo Soho. Okay. And then I went on to be the GM at Smith. Okay. Uh, also oh, part of Two one. Roads, yeah. Thompson mm-hmm. Hotel. Uh, and then just transferred over to Park South, which is a JDV, Joie de Vivre Hotel, last December. Okay. So what, for people that are listening, younger people are listening, why, out of all the people that people have to choose from in New York City, did somebody make you a GM? I think I got really lucky, and I was really fortunate. Bullshit. I don't believe in luck, and I don't believe in fortune. I believe in discipline, right. and I believe in intelligence, and I believe in hard work. I agree with you. I and agree then with you, you get lucky. But then I think you also have to meet the right people and have some people take you under your wing. I think I, I, you know, I work very, But that very wouldn't happen unless you sure. put all the hard work in. Yeah, I, I had a, a general manager who I think saw something in me. I, I worked really Who's hard. Who's the general manager? Uh, his name was Rob Andrews. He was a GM at Tribeca Grand at the time. That was one of the okay. first hotels I worked hotel. at in New York. Um, and he pushed me really hard and I think saw something in me and kind of helped me get to where I am today. Um, and, you know, I think you do have to be fortunate to meet the right people in your career. And I was really fortunate to meet two people, Rob being one of them and Olivier Lordenois, who's a general manager at the Mark Hotel, being the other. And I think both of them saw something in me. And I was doing revenue management at the time, um, which is not the traditional path into becoming a no, general not, manager. No, not at all. No, I did, I'm going to disagree. Oh, oh go I'm for it. Well, you know better than me. At the time. At the time. How long ago? Uh, about five years ago. It was the perfect time because I tell every kid in Cornell, UNLV, and every other school that I speak at, and I say, I don't care if you like food and beverage. I don't care if you like marketing. I don't care what you like. If you don't like revenue management and you don't learn revenue management, don't ever come apply for a job in my hotel. I couldn't agree with you anymore. I couldn't agree with and you You know more. why? Because yeah. revenue management is becoming more important because owners are becoming more strict, lenders are becoming more strict, and money is becoming more expensive. And if you don't know revenue management, if you don't know how to make money for a hotel, what the hell do I need you for? Sure. I think it's also understand uh, important to understand it from the consumer sentiment as well, right? We need to know where our guests are booking, how they're booking, what they're going to expect. Well, the only reason I want to know property. that is so I can make the owner more money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Without a doubt. Without so it doubt. sounds like you need to have a, uh, you know, a, a vibrant and diverse skill set in order to get to that general manager position. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think that the way people are becoming general managers, I'm seeing it every day, is changing. I think we're taking people from non-traditional backgrounds because the industry is changing so much. You know, uh, a, a big part of our industry today is people buying pictures of hotel rooms online and reading stories, right? Um, we're one of the few products that you can't touch or feel before you buy it. Right. You can't order it online and send it back you know, two you can days buy, after. You know you can buy Glenn if you touch it, and you can touch and feel him before you buy him. <laughs> now, that's that's right. a funny joke, right? I know. That's, that's real funny. Thanks for showing me how to do it, Anthony. <laughs> but um, 
And I'm going to kind of challenge sure. you again. I was 29 years old, became a general manager of the Sun Hotel, and I told the headhunter that you probably know, I said, I will pay your fee if you, if you put me in front of the owner. If I don't get the job, I'll pay your fee. And at the time, it was about a ten to $15,000 fee, and I didn't have 10 to 15 cents in my pocket. And um, he said, they want a general manager has experience. I said, I want that job. I want that hotel. I want to be the GM. And, it's like, and I told him that I'll pay his fee. He said, okay, I'll put you up. I got the job the next day. Now, I've only worked at the front desk as a night manager at front desk operations at the Plaza Hotel. Had no food and beverage, no housekeeping, no anything. But I had balls. And I, had, I was aggressive, and I was, I was really good um, on my feet. I, I, I think quickly, I speak quickly, and I move quickly. And the owner took to that, and I got my job, and I've not, not been a general manager for the last 25 years, or a vice president, or a guy who owns his own company. Um, and that's the job that started everything. So when people come to me and say, well, I got to work in food and beverage, and I got to work in housekeeping, and I got to work in revenue, and I got to work in marketing, and I got to work in PR, and I, what I say is, work in revenue, Get that basis. Get a revenue management uh, basis. Go to the front desk. Learn the front desk. If you get lucky enough to work in housekeeping and work in food and beverage, great. If not, in my opinion, if you're running a small hotel, an independent hotel in New York City, basically the occupancy takes care of itself and the average rate takes care of itself by and large. You, if you don't learn how the system of revenue management works, you won't be successful. If you know how to deal with people, you're good. You don't have to have 27 different disciplines to become a general manager. That's my opinion. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I, you know, I haven't worked in every department in the hotel, but I've been fortunate to surround myself with smart people who have. And if I don't know something, I ask the question. Uh, you know, I haven't worked in housekeeping. I have worked at the front desk. I've worked in sales. I've worked in revenue management. I've worked in reservations. Um, so that's certainly my strong point. Uh, but I would I never hire to, you. I would never hire I, you because you have a beard. I don't trust people with beards. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I think that there was a time in the industry a long time ago where, where that was the case. I never would have had a beard 10 years ago. With I, I wore a tie every single day. God forbid I walked through the lobby without the top button on my jacket buttoned up. I think... You know, we're starting to see things change. My clients have beards, right? And we right. want to put ourselves on the same level as our clients. Very few of our guests in a lifestyle hotel are checking in wearing a suit and tie like you are today. Right. And so when I come downstairs or want to speak to one of the guests in the lobby and I'm wearing a suit and tie, I don't know that they necessarily feel comfortable. And I want them to feel comfortable like I'm on the same level as they are. And we're working with clients from major, you know, um, technology companies, startups, arts and culture, and these are the people that we want in our hotel because we think that it, 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 it's what makes the hotel when, when people from all these kind of creative industries are sitting together, talking in the lobby, getting to know each other, meeting each other. What's the one thing that makes you successful? I do work hard. I think I work hard and I think I'm compassionate. I think I'm, I'm overly positive and I like to see the best in people and that's helped me a lot, a long way throughout my career. So you don't find people doing things wrong, you find do, people doing things right. Well, I mean, it's not to say that, you know, you, you've never found anyone doing wrong. No, any, but there's a mindset wrong, there. What I'm but, talking about, there's a mindset, right? Yeah, I think you, uh, I, I, I try and praise every single day. One of my first uh, first jobs, and, and I'll leave it unnamed, but, um, you know, I worked there for about two years. I, I really wasn't happy. I had, had gotten another opportunity to go someplace else. And on the last day, my boss came in and said to me, oh, my God, Justin, we're so sorry that you're going. <laughs> I know that everybody loves you. Is there anything we can do to get you to stay? And I looked at him and I said, I really thought every day for the past two years that I was going to get fired. No one ever gave me any praise. No one ever gave me any positive reinforcement. And now today, on my last day, that I'm looking to leave my job, this is the first time I'm hearing it. Had you told me a year ago that that was the case, right. and we worked on a development plan, I would have stayed. Right. Um, and so I think it's really important to praise people and tell them they're doing a good job. The, one of the best GMs I had, every single Friday at the end of the week, would walk around before he left to every single department head in the hotel and say, hey, Thanks for all your hard work this week. Have a great weekend. Let's get back at it on Monday. Uh, and that, to me, mm -hmm. the difference of that of those two things next to each other was just and that is so eye opening. Important. It's so important. It's so critical. Especially, I have a I have a, a reputation of pushing people really hard. And why has it worked for me for so long without people kind of you know jumping ship? It's because I praise, I'm respectful, I listen, I cry, and I laugh with you. But when it's time to work, I will push you harder than probably anybody's ever pushed in your life. But it's not about me. It's about the, the job. And I'm probably not as uh, happy and running around the hotel praising everyone as you are. But everybody knows where they stand. So if you're doing a great job, you know it every day. I think and that's that, important. That's so important. It's critical. And I think, you Glenn, know, you're doing a good job. It, it, hey, thank it, you so much. I, I'm really, I think this is a really interesting uh, conversation. Every single time I try to ask a question, you're just, you know, you're just jumping in there. And But you're doing a good job, and I truly appreciate oh you God. trying to jump in. All right, thank you. You're doing I, a good and job. I wanna, and I just want to take a moment to say how much you, I really appreciate 
everything that you, you know, do you, for this show. You're winning employee of the month this month for checking with Anthony and Glenn. <laughs> that, right? That's great. It's the first time because in, in the three months we've been on the show, he's won it every single month. So it's nice. But you're that, winning uh, it this month. All right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I know this is a great conversation, but we need to hear a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back after this message. Hey everybody, Glenn here. So listen to this. Cobblestone Hotels is celebrating their 10th anniversary, and man, have they accomplished a lot in the last decade. Already, they have more than 150 hotels throughout the United States, but they're in smaller and medium-sized markets. Those markets that the big franchise companies, they're underserving, they're overlooking, and in some cases just ignoring. But Cobblestone is an expert in these markets. And their president and CEO, Brian Wagernese, listen, I've gotten to know him in the last 10 years, and he has worked every job possible, including being an owner and operator. I can personally vouch for how awesome this company is, how awesome he is as an individual, because he understands the importance of finding the right combination of hotel brand and franchise owner. He's also an incredibly dedicated professional. Whether it's a cobblestone hotel and suites Main Street design, Borders Inn and Suites, or one of the newly acquired brands such as Boulders Inn and Suites, Key West Inns, Centerstone Inns and Suites, Cobblestone has brands that range from economy to upper mid-tier and one that's right for you. Quite simply, Cobblestone Hotels is the franchise for franchise owners. Patrick Mullenix, well, he's their cobble, he's Cobblestone's new president of franchise development. Give him a call or check out their website at cobblestonefranchising.com. But give Patrick a call. He's a great guy. I've known him for a really, really long time, too. You can find him at 920-216-0620. That's cobblestonefranchising.com. And tell him Glenn sent you. All right. Um, but I'm a GM, so we GM. Uh, I, no, I know, and that's, yeah, and that's yeah. a whole thing. And as a guy that's kind of on the outside, like I didn't come in through the hotel business. I came in through the journalist side mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. business, right? Mm-hmm. I became a commentator about the hospitality business because I am passionate and love the hospitality business. And, and I'm always wondering. Else. Yeah, yeah, and I can't imagine doing anything else, right? And for me, it's just a, it's just amazing to learn from guys like you, Justin, about what that journey is like and how you motivate staff and how you find successes so you came in to the park south hotel just under a year ago as we're recording this show um what were the biggest challenges that you had because when you take in a new role you've got to get that whole team on your side and behind your plan and whatever your plan is is going to be different than the plan that the previous gm had yeah i think to a certain extent you have to kind of live the cliches right and you kind of have to live the stereotypes and you know i came into the park south this team, a large majority of it had been together for 15 years. Not many hotels in New York had had the tenure that I've seen here. We've had people that that opened the hotel. Our director of engineering was the painting superintendent on the job site when they were renovating and building the hotel. A lot of our employees have been there since day one. 15, 16, 17 years. I'm the new guy here now. Right. So right? it's like so, they own the place and you're coming in. Exactly. What the they're they're like, who the heck is this yeah. guy? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you how old you are? Sure, I'm 35. Okay, you look you look 29, right? You look young. And it's I'm, 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 I'm going to make like and, and, and this is not it. bad or good, right? Um, but I'm going to say a word. Uh, actually, I'm going to say something and tell me if I'm right or wrong. You've never run a union hotel in no, New York City. No, not true. Two. You Two. have? Yes. Okay, uh, so how the hell do you look so good never including running a union one. hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a whole other thing. I mean, to get, to get because, back. Now, again, uh, unions are great. Union hotels are great. But the, the, there's an intensity. Sure. That, that all of a sudden the intensity goes up. And that you still look like you're, because I, I aged a couple of years. I'm still very good friends with everybody that's working. All the hotels I've worked in that happen to be union. I just came from one yesterday. Love everybody. But there's an intensity. Like you just Absolutely. said. Absolutely. Like you, 15 years they were working there and you're the new guy. That you're co- coming and going. It's their way. And if you don't get to their way, it'll never be your way. Sure. So I've worked in a, in a few union hotels, two as general manager, including this one. Um, I heard a long time ago when I was much younger in my career that if we, and this is a, a value that, that I'm fortunate to work for a company that, that really, they really live it. If we treat our employees as our own and we tell them that they work for us. They are your own. Right. right? But, and, and we build a culture in the hotel that is not, you know, 
focused on the union, that's focused on us and what we do and how we treat our guests and how we treat each other and we take good care of our people, they'll come to us first. Um, I've been fortunate in, in this hotel where I have great relationships with the delegates. Um, I have a great relationship with our business agent. Uh, we, I think we play by the rules. Um, we try and take really, really great care of our employees. And when you and make a mistake, for, you tell the union members, I made a mistake. Absolutely. And I that's really what turns people around. That's number one, right? If I have a question, I'll call my business agent. I don't just assume. Um, and do something and then have, have it come back to you know, hurt us later down the line. I think we ask the questions, we're honest up front, um, and we've created a really great relationship with both the union and, and our employees, so tell and it's me, paid dividends. So tell me one position, one situation, doesn't have to be this hotel, where you had a union member that was dead wrong and he made your life miserable. Never, never once. No. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> I'll hit you with this microphone, you full of shit person. No, listen, I, you know, listen, I, I think, uh, Anthony, Don't I've give me the political to, correct answer. No, I've listened to some of your podcasts, and, and, I, and I like what you have to say. Did you ever watch my you, show? You share, I have. Okay. And I think uh, I share you know, a lot of the same... Uh, no, I just want to know, because sure, then he'll sure. know who, who I am. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, th I, th I think we share a lot of the same views. I think, you know, it's tough when you're in a position where you think that you are doing the right thing, and you have someone, like you said, that is dead wrong that's taking advantage of the and system trying to tough you, tough, be tougher than you yeah and and you know what listen i think that he's not going to give us the answer a, a lot of times you know hopefully we can get get people to see it our way and we can get the business agent i want to know side. one situation oh where you went toe to toe with somebody and you won and how hard was it you don't have to mention names or hotels just situation I mean, the, the the stories are not that interesting, right? We have you know uh, an extra pay for for picking up some you know dog poop on the side of the no, road. No, but, but people listen. But, but, but listening, or, but listening. Hold on, listening to you and that little incident where you're just talking about. No one has any idea about that, right? Sure. So it comes. Con it's like when coffee makers weren't in the hotel room. Nobody knows that we had to pay housekeepers two dollars extra to clean a coffee maker. So and that's fine because housekeepers work really hard. So I want to know that story because because people listening don't know that. Story. So tell me that story. I love that you want to pull back the veneer and show what's I really happening. Story. In the Don't underbelly. give me the bullshit story. Give me yeah. the real story. Tell me about the dog poop. I want to know. <laughs> well, you know, I think that you you know you have people where they exploit opportunities in the agreement to take advantage of extra pay. Okay. Um, and maybe they've gotten away with it for longer than. So they tell me the have. dog poop story. Um, and so uh, you know, we I had a story at one Union Hotel where the, the houseman got extra pay anytime there was a neighborly pet that decided to relieve himself in front of the hotel. Uh, and turns out that you know, a couple months down the line, we had uh, heard that he was getting to know the people in the building that were walking their pets and asking to make sure that their pets were going in front of the hotel so that oh, he could boy, oh boy. pick up after right. them and. And, he would make, and collect his extra pay, and so. And how much money did he make for collecting poop? Twenty-five dollars. Every time somebody Every pooped. time he had to pick it up, so wow. it could be an extra hundred bucks a day. And yeah. how did that happen? Uh, you know, it was a it was a long-standing agreement from many, many, many years ago. Where you know, I think that uh, the building went up next to the hotel, if I recall correctly, and all of a sudden, this influx of people with pets started walking in front, and the hotel wanted to make sure that the exterior of their building was pristine. So, how did you get rid of that you know, problem? I, I think I think that we we kind of. We wrestled with him a little bit, and you know, he said, "No, no, no, no. I, you know, I'm not doing anything." And you know, obviously, there's certain guidelines about how we can, you know, um, catch somebody, discipline, or catch someone, so to speak. And so, I think after some time, you know, I got to know the employee. We had some other people that got to get to know the employee. We kind of explained to him the difference. We kind of went head to head with him, and we said, "Listen, look, you know, person to person, forget about the hotel, forget about the business, forget about the union, union. forget about not. Like, what you're doing here is not okay." And I think we helped him see that I think he saw that we were real people that were just you know captains of the business and, and trying to move the business forward in the best direction and that it was nothing personal against him or I or him or the director of housekeeping or other members of the hotel and we brought it down to a very human level and got him to understand that what he was doing was truly wrong and you know in 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 his head I do believe that at some point he said oh it's not your money you know right. it's it's uh, whoever's money and you know we're here in this giant hotel and what does it matter if I get an extra hundred dollars a day? Right, I right? think it's, it it's matters. Peanuts. Matters a it's lot, peanuts, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, how much um, did he get paid when Glenn pooped in front of the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, uh, you know, he paid so, he paid me so, to clean it so, up. So basically, he still gets paid for the poop, but he's not lying anymore. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's a great story. And and I know you hesitated and I had to pull it out of you. But you know how many people listening to this have no clue that somebody gets paid twenty five dollars to pick up poop in front of their hotel because it was a long standing agreement. And that's what happens with these long standing agreements. 
pilgrimage. Sure. And then pe- people try to take advantage of them. Absolutely. We used I, to have to pay. We used to have to pay at the Plaza Hotel. We used to have to pay, I believe, a dollar a newspaper to deliver to the room. And there's 800 sure. rooms in the yeah, hotel. Yeah. So a bellman can make $800 wow. a night just delivering newspapers. That sounds like a really good gig. It is, if you can get it. I think most people are good. You know, I don't want that to come out the wrong way. I think most people are generally good. Well, you're too good. damn nice. You, you, uh, you're a nice guy. But and, this, these no, things happen, but, right? But he, another... he, he was an asshole. Sure, sure. There are, unfortunately, situations that you have to deal with that mm-hmm. you kind of have to figure out, hey, what am I going to do? He wasn't lying, right? He was... Hey, here's you know, the proof. He was documenting it. Here, here's the here's bag the that I just picked up out in front of the hotel, and um, you know you have to pay him, right? Right. Um, but I think at the core, you, you get down to it, and you're like, hey, why is uh, Joe uh, getting a hundred you know, bucks a day, and Bob, when Bob's working, there's only one of them? I would have right, done it right? differently. I would have made sure all the dogs coming in front of my hotel had diarrhea. <laughs> I would have given them something, given their given their owner something, given them diarrhea, so they have to pick up diarrhea. <laughs> And the argument would be, I need thirty-five dollars to pick up the diarrhea. I right. don't get paid enough yeah, to spend right. for diarrhea. You know, sure. you know that's what would happen. Yeah, I take it to, to a union absolutely. grievance. So I want to go back to uh, the question I had from you. You come in, you're starting in the role. How do you show that even though you're going to change the culture, that um, they're still valued employees? Well, yeah, I think, listen, we got very fortunate, right? And so our brand is all about individuality of the employees and taking great care of our guests. Right. And I think that this hotel could have been part of our brand for many, many, many years before we got there. So this was a really, really easy transition for us. And the ownership and management company prior to us being there did a phenomenal job with these employees. And so they they were living our values before they knew that they were living our values, before we showed it to them on paper. Um, And at the end of the day, my thing is, is just be nice, right? Like you said, yep. and so they were—they were doing a great job of that before I got there, and I think that they saw that that was my way about going out. Uh, uh, things that internal service to each other is just as important as external service to our guests, um, and so. Like I said before, you have to live the stereotypes. You have to live the cliches. I got to know everybody. I got to show them that I was on their team. I got to show them that my brand of leadership, we talk about a lot of servant leadership, that I'm there to help them, that I'm there to provide them with the tools that they need in order to be successful to do their job. Wait, right. do they have to tell me what that is so I can support them. But do you ever get pissed off? I do, of course, of course, of course. Do I get pissed off a lot? <laughs> uh, it feels like you're really pissed off on this uh, on this podcast, <laughs> but I no, think people miss no, it. No, 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 because because I don't know how to be that guy. Like right. I don't know how to be so nice, so gentle, so sweet, say all the words you're saying, be politically correct. I don't know how to do that. So can you teach me how to do that? I, I can. We can sit down for a little bit afterwards. I I, I really do. I really do believe in the power of positivity. Me I wasn't, too. I'm I wasn't always guy. that way. Um, I had a couple. You know, a couple instances where, you know, I could have gone the other way and I, I decided to take the, the... So tell me when you learned how not to be a dick. I think I've, I've learned to be who I am because I've taken the best of the people around me that I like and I've chosen not to be, you know, that, that part of the person that I don't like. Like, for example, like, I've chosen to be the GM that says thank you on Friday afternoon. I've chosen to be the GM that gives praise. I've chosen not to be the GM that, that doesn't praise and that makes you feel like your job is in jeopardy every single day. And I think in this day and age with the millennial workforce, and I, I hesitate to use that word because I'm probably at the cusp of being one, uh, we have to give as much to our employees as they get from us. Right. And it's a two way street. And I think the sooner we realize that, um, the better off everybody is. And, and the number one thing that makes that work is positivity and praise. And for them to feel like they're doing something that's contributing to the success of the business. You know, so we have to we have to preach that we have to campaign for that in order to be successful. But you know, what's interesting is you said the millennial word, which is a dirty word on my podcast or our podcast. Um, because people look at millennials and they're like, oh, they're so special, they're so this, we have to worry. No, you don't. You have to do this. You have to do what you just said. You said, treat them with respect and let them know they're contributing to the business. So when I was coming up with the business, and I'm 53 years old, it would have been nice if somebody pat me on the back and say, you're contributing to the business, you're important to us. So I'm not a millennial. So... The millennials are demanding it. We didn't demand it. No, they're I think... Uh, they're uh, demanding being nice. Be, we uh, just kind of took things as it was and took things and we for granted afraid. as we were, we were coming up. We were afraid fired. Now millennials are like, I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask for what I want. So what, I, what I'm saying is, you know, w- w- the way you... Because people ask me all the time, I don't know how to manage millennials. How about this? Why don't you just manage as a human and treat people with respect and you'll do okay. So as tough as aggressive I am, I'm as sweet and as nice guy as you'll ever find, but I treat people with respect and when people try to treat me with disrespect, I just let them know. But you're right, treating millennials, it's like anybody else. Treating that employee that's 50 years old, you're not gonna treat them any different than you treat that 20 year old just because that 20 year old is a millennial. 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think that, like the views that we have on business today, even in, even since I got started doing this, are, are a little bit different. I remember, you know, the first hotel I worked in, you know, the PL was locked in a draw in a oh, safe yeah, right, in right, the right, GM's right. office, and none of us ever knew how the hotel was doing. And, and, and then how could you judge your right? job? And so, am I doing a good job? Am I doing a bad job? Don't worry about this. And don't, don't show them the PL this. because and, don't, don't, think, don't, don't show it to them. And now I leave it out on my desk. And right. it, I share you know, with whether them. it's my director of sales and marketing, or I should say our director of sales and marketing, I don't, I don't own that person um you know or our our houseman or our bellman or a front desk agent if they're curious to learn about the business then they can come in and have a conversation with me and i can show them you know how things ebb and flow how we make money how we lose money and it's critical and it's critical because when i came up in this business no one ever taught me that when i was at the plaza hotel the macro hotel the double tree hotel which was the embassy suites no one ever taught me that and i learned that when i went somebody recruited me to do frank speranza recruited me to, to run a company called H A. you know frank H A. ponish and it was a bread company, and um, it was bankrupt. And he said, hey, you're an entrepreneur kind of guy. You can turn this business around. I cried a lot, but we started figuring it out. And Dr. Santo, God rest his soul, who was a great restaurateur on Sign of Dove, Contra Punto, Arizona 206. But he didn't make a lot of money uh, from his bakery. And he came to me one day. We were on 63rd at his office. No, 61st and 3rd across from Bloomingdale's at his office on the second floor. And he had two brown bags, one in his left hand, one in the right hand. And I come in and he goes, which bag? I go, which bag what? Which bag are we paying today? I go, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, I told you. I'm asking you a question. Which bag are we paying today? I go, I don't know. You pick one. I go, that one. Thank God I picked the right one because that was the payroll. Right. He goes, go pay the payroll. I didn't pay the accounts receivable, um, uh, the accounts payable, because I didn't pick that bag. So we had to wait two or three weeks to pay that. So learning the business from a P&L standpoint, I was like, oh, paychecks just don't get paid in the hotel business, when you're a front desk clerk and you get your paycheck, especially working in a big brand, you just think you get a paycheck. You don't realize you have to earn the money and you have to right. save expenses in order to get that paycheck. And I learned it the hard way. I learned about the hotel business outside the hotel business. Sure. So, sure. so it sounds a lot like when you are open and honest with people, it winds up making them more engaged in the business and they want to get on board with what your plan is going to be. Yeah, and I think it, it, it sparks curiosity, uh, and, and curiosity is great. It, it sparks ownership of their department, of their business. Um, I like to let all my department heads know that you own your business. Your department is your business. If you went out and opened your own business and, and that was your department, it's the same exact thing. So if you're the director of housekeeping, you own the housekeeping department. This is your P&L. This is how much money we make. This is how much money we spend. This is how much is left over, right? And so the more that's left over means the more that we can do, right? The more that's left over for bonuses and incentives, the more that's left left over for employee appreciation, the more that's left over for product improvement, you know, and, and to move the business forward. And I think that I, I've walked into a number of hotels where, you know, the department heads were not the true owners of their business. And I think once you sell it to them that way, you see the engagement turn around, whether it's somebody who's 25 years old, who was a department head for the first time, or someone who's, you know, in their 50s that's been doing this for 20 or 25 okay. years, and they, you know, have never had anybody walk in and tell them or explain it to them like that. Can we play a game called, I'm going to guess something. Okay, we haven't That's played this fun. game before. I, I feel don't like think we, we should have. get some new theme music. I'm going to guess, and you tell me if I'm wrong, because sure. I've been wrong already with you a couple times. Um, you grew up in a nice area, maybe a suburban area. You had very strong parents that gave you a lot of freedom, but busted your balls when you didn't do the right thing, and they gave you good guidance, but they didn't over guide you. But when you did something wrong, there were consequences. Absolutely correct. Wow, That's really Spot impressive. It. Right, and and the reason I, I I felt that from you is because you're a positive person. You, you were trained or, or taught or, or uh, raised to respect people, all kinds of people, no matter what color or, or where they're from. You've been raised to work for what you have, and you are a very humble person. And I've never seen a general manager, I, and I know almost every general manager in the city, at least any, anyone over the age of 40, that has your positivity, your aggressive style, that's also very nice, that doesn't look like they're burnt out, they've worked in union hotels, and I can tell in 20 years when you're my age, you're still going to have that energy. So whatever your parents did, they did a good job. Oh, well, thanks. I'm sure they'll be really, really happy to hear that. No, and uh, I mean that sincerely. No, I appreciate it very, very much. It's really, really kind of you. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I think it's time to start wrapping this uh, episode up. Ooh. So we ask them. I will. All right. So what we like to do is we, you know, kind of like put everyone on the on the spot. We want you to tell us something we don't know about you. It doesn't have to be work related. It could be very personally related. We already know that you're able to grow <laughs> magnificent beards, so it can't be that. I am. I'm an excellent juggler. Really. really? How did you get into juggling? I, uh, I broke my foot in gym class uh, in seventh grade, and the teacher said that you could go to the library and write a paper on whatever sport you want, or you can learn how to juggle. 
Uh, and so I sat in the gym while everybody else was playing sports, and I uh, taught myself how to juggle. So can you? I, I can juggle a little bit. So can you juggle three or four balls? I can do four if somebody perfectly throws in the four. Should we have a juggling no, contest no. right now? Uh, I'd on. love to see that. We might, yeah. we might embarrass <laughs> We're having a juggling contest. I am tightening the water, and I'm going to sit in my chair because I still have a broken foot. Uh, you learn juggling with broken foot, so let me see if I can juggle with my broken foot. All right. I, oh, wait, I think, uh, you know what? Before you do that, I'm going to get a video of this as well so we could share it with our, our okay, audience. So. so give me one second. All right. And, and, and you take us through. You'd be the play-by-play on my juggle. All right. Yeah. Juggle away. Get closer to the microphone. Ready? Because I'm far away from the microphone. Let's see, he's doing an excellent job. Oh, oh, you oh! Ca- ah. I, did a, I did three, I did three bottles of water, and I did it three times without drinking. Well, the water's That's tough, because right. you have the water moving around in the bottle, so it's not solid like it would be if you had yeah. some tennis right, here we go, one more like time. That. Three. <laughs> yeah, three, two, one, go! Oh, he's juggling! <laughs> I did three times. Uh, excellent. All right, Let's Anthony see. is now Let's passing over the bottles of water I just, to I don't Justin. Know if I can do it sitting up. Now he's getting nervous. Uh, getting nervous. Now I'm nervous that I said that was such right. an excellent. I, I, I know you really chose poorly. There oh, you go. Oh, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, he's juggling. Oh. oh. So, so far I'm in the lead. So far I'm in the lead. There we go. Uh, I still oh. think I'm in the lead. Think I'm in the lead. Come on, beat me. One, two, three. Uh, we're about tied. All right. Yeah. All right. We're about tied. All right. I'm gonna stop juggling the video. Uh, great job, guys. That was fun. All right, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty awesome. So, um, ask me the question. All right, Anthony, tell us something we don't know. Um, I learned to juggle. Yeah. When I was in the Air Force, I was in the day room, and we had uh, we we had a, a, a pool table, and I wasn't really good at pool. And there's one gentleman that wasn't good in pool, and he started juggling the balls. I saw him doing it one day. And I go, can I juggle your balls? And he goes, absolutely. And he taught me how to juggle his balls, and I became a juggler a little bit. I'm not a great juggler, but I can juggle. I thought this was the story where you were going to tell us you were coming out. No. <laughs> so tell me about something we don't know. Uh, oh, now I'm on the spot. I can't juggle for anything. I think that's uh, pretty shocked. obvious. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I, I am not capable of doing anything athletic well at all, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows so, that. So, Glenn, I was going to say, tell us something. We yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was in eighth grade, I got into comic books and I decided I didn't want to pay for them. So, I started my own business selling comic books and convinced all of my friends to start collecting them. So, that way I would get the profits from that and build a collection myself. So, now like he's it. not good at sports and he can't juggle, but he was into comic books when he was a kid. Makes That's sense, right? right? I right. could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you didn't. So, Glenn, tell yeah. us, uh, tell the audience where we can find you. All right, but before we do that, uh, Justin, tell us a little bit about the Park South Hotel. Give a good plug for your property. Sure. So, we're a 131 room boutique property, 28th Street between Park uh, and Lexington. Uh, it's a great hotel, recently renovated over the past couple of years. We have an amazing staff. Uh, the staff is really incredible, and one of the things I think we're known uh, the most for. You know, among our guests, they're really warm and inviting. I think we we offer a brand of very gracious hospitality, very generous hospitality, where um, the guests really feel like we care about them, which is you know everybody talks about today, but I think still kind of hard to do. Uh, and we have an incredible food and beverage partner in Tim and Nancy Cushman from Cushman Concepts. They opened Oya in Boston about 10 years ago uh, to some incredible accolades, um, and uh, they're our partner. That we have an Oya here. Uh, in New York at the Park South. Uh, it's a contemporary Japanese restaurant that d- does phenomenally well. We have uh, another three meal a day restaurant called Covina, which is California Mediterranean influence, also does incredibly well. And then I think probably the, the biggest selling point for Park South, April through October, we have an amazing rooftop bar with skyline views, completely open air, uh, amazing food, uh, also operated by Tim and Nancy. And so it's a, it's a really kind of fun New York City destination. Great rooms, great food and beverage, hey, really, really nice people. Glenn, I bet you can't guess who I'm going to call the next time a friend wants to stay in the city and you're looking for a cool hotel. Uh, I'm going to say Mr. Kellerman yeah. over here. And it's going to go like this. Yeah. Hey, man, how you doing? Can you get yeah. me a good rate? Right. And, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and in the spirit of full disclosure, we were supposed to actually talk about all that stuff with the food and beverage program they have because it's interesting, it's unique. We're going to have to save that for another but you show. Know what, but you know what this podcast is about? This podcast, yeah. if, if, if so if you're PR person out there and you're trying to get people on your uh, on our podcast I'm not ever going to ask the questions that you would ask right. that the PR people want you to ask that's why I don't want like people PR people looking at me when I'm on my podcast 
um, because I'm going to ask the things that I think people want to hear. And the interesting thing that I found out about you is that you're genuine and that you can be a nice person in this business. You can work in union, non-union. You can care about your employees and you can still have high standards. So I'm going to ask those kind of questions. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I think this show, um, though, it went in a direction that we didn't expect. We kind of love that. And I think it was really uh, fabulous. And I really appreciate you, Justin, opening up and being fully honest with us. And I think that's something that really resonates with the listeners and why our show is catching on. I think so. Yeah. So uh, you can find me at Traveling Glenn anywhere on social media. And, of course, go to NoVacancyNews.com and check out my other uh, podcasts through there. You can get uh, checking in with Anthony and Glenn at NoVacancyNews.com as well and on iTunes and all that. If you give us a five-star rating on iTunes or some of the other services, we will read your review here. So give us that five-star review. And you get a free bottle of water. You yes. can find me anywhere you want to be on social media at Anthony Hotels. Where can we find you? You can find me at Jay Kellerman at ParkSouthHotel.com. All right, right. And just don't ask him for a great rate because right. he's not going to give it to you. He's got to make some money. He's got owners. Listen, when I was coming up in this industry, uh, everybody got comps. If you knew me, you got a comp. If I knew you, you got a comp. Nowadays, guys, don't call me and ask me for a comp. Don't ask me for even a good rate because... Especially uh, over the first two weeks of December. Right. But even <laughs> even in general, it's like even my friends, even people that want to be on my show, people that want to be on my podcast, like it's hard for them to give you a good rate because owners have high expectations. Yeah. I tell my friends that real friends don't ask for discounts. They pay a pull price and write a great review well, afterwards. Well, not, <laughs> well, you know what? I'm not a real friend, so I'll be asking for <laughs> Awesome. And be sure to check them out, the parksouthhotel.com. That's Park South Hotel right in middle of Manhattan. So for Justin, Anthony, and myself, Glenn, thanks for checking in. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn teaching you to be the hotel you're that you wanna be. It's checking in with Anthony.